yes sir sir mm-hmm. i mean i am not able to really get this uh, kind of uh, the delay uh, for this when you saying that if b is toggle one and then it will be longer for that i'm not able to able to get it sir. so we will just see abhi we will just look at the delays ka a model we will just see that don't worry okay sir okay so now we look at various models of delays one simple model is you assume that there is some you know when when the input changes there is an i average that will flow and the capacitor will discharge this model will give you know i need to find this value of kn and everything to to be able to come up with an accurate delay another model could be you say that okay there is an effective r on the device is on there is an effective r on the capacitor swaps at one and this discharges through this resistor hmm so that is another way to model the propagation delay through an inverter uh r on method is usually simpler because r on estimation for a linear region you can still do much more easily hmm and uh, instead of you know calculating the i average from this kind of a curve you remember this transfer characteristic to find out i average of this transfer characteristic can be very tricky so this uh, you know r on model is is usually a simpler model to work with also more intuitive actually okay uh <clears throat> so if you have a uh, uh, input transitioning from uh, In, in, like in this blue curve from 0 to 1 and then from 1 to 0 the output will transition from 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 and your propagation delay would be measured something like this equivalent resistance of the uh, n mos plus equivalent resistance from the p mos divided by 2 hmm? but can you tell me why uh, yeah this equivalent resistance ka formula hai can you tell me why this happens who can tell me we already discussed this in one of the office as also but i just want to review with you Why yeah, does sir, this happen? Coupling yeah. capacitance, sir, because huh? it's a coupling capacitance between the capacitance because of that. Coupling capacitance between what? So I mean the input and the output, like the gate input with the output, right? It gets mm. it the middle capacitance. Yeah. The middle capacitance that we talked about, where we said that an analog circuit should be much more relevant, but you see in digital circuits also we see these notches. because as the gate as the gate input goes from 0 to 1 there is a coupling with source and drain there the source is ground or vdd that is that will not change much but the other side which is not driven to vdd or ground that side will is a floating capacitor so it will see some extra build up of charge and this uh, this is what you will see observe in the transient response okay uh, it can also be understood you know in some cases like uh, when you will talk about uh, uh, memory design and stuff like that so it will also be understood like that there is a inversion layer here when the device is on there is an inversion layer here and when you turn it off all at once this charge has to go somewhere this charge will go to the source or drain region half will go to the source half will go to the drain and that will appear as this this is also another way to look at it this this phenomena also happens okay so there are two two things that come into picture so essentially Now, sir so so essentially cgd and the cgs are getting coupled with the cr right here yeah. yes that is what is coming into picture so if you want to improve the performance what do you do humne abhi dekha the formula is cl into r so if we can keep the load capacitance to be small we would improve the delays if we can keep the self loading because we know that the drain of the n mos and the p mos also become a part of load capacitance to be small we will get lesser capacitance uh if i increase the sizes what happens r on and uh, like r on of the p mos and the n mos would decrease so i can uh, improve the delays there but as i do that what happens अभी हमने कहा था कीप द ड्रेन कैपेसिटेंस इज स्मॉल इफ यू इंक्रीज द डिवाइस साइज इज व्हाट हैपेंस टू द ड्रेन कैपेसिटेंस इज डिफ्यूजन कैपेसिटेंस इंक्रीजेस हां डिफ्यूजन कैपेसिटेंस इंक्रीजेस सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज सेल्फ लोडिंग सो यू जस्ट कैन नॉट इन कीप ऑन इंक्रीजिंग द साइज आफ्टर सम टाइम यू विल नॉट सी एनी बेनिफिट 
because the device is loading itself. So you are reducing the R equivalent, but the patience is also increasing. So it is kind of a self-defeating uh, mechanism after some time. And then what about VDD? The R equivalent seems to be dependent on VDD somewhere. What would you do to VDD? You would want to increase the VDD to reduce delays or decrease VDD to reduce delays? Sir, increase. Huh? So we need to increase supply. You need to increase the VDD. Why? Sir, because uh, the uh, current would increase again uh, on increasing the VDD. Okay. So because current would increase, my overall resistance would reduce. Yes, sir. Okay. Raghav, you have a question? Uh, yes, sir. I have some questions. Sir, for example, in this overloading thing, uh, because if we increase the size too much, this peak that we are seeing, that will basically become too much. Yeah. That is the effect we will be seeing, right? Overloading. Self-loading, yes. So this peak will become too much and it will become enlarged over the time axis, right? That you're saying so effectively. Mm, no, I did not use the word enlarge. Did I use the word enlarge? So, sir, I mean this uh, maximum peak range would increase, right? So you're saying this. maximum peak may increase because of bigger device, bigger more charge in the channel region, yes. But the duration of this peak, I did not comment anything about. Because the devices are bigger, the, the discharge would also be faster. So even if the peak is higher, it will discharge equally fast. Okay. So, sir, so like what exactly then we are meaning by the overloading thing? What what do you mean by? Overloading. I mean, I get that the diffusion, uh -huh. diffusion capacitance will increase. Yeah, with the greater capacity. We did not use the word overloading. We use the word self-loading. Yeah, self-loading. Yes, self-loading. Self-loading is the capacitance on the of the MOSFET itself out coming as coming on the output. See, there is some CD over here. Yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. I know. So, okay. this is C out. So the CD is in parallel with C out. As you increase yeah. the device size, the CD increases. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. So effectively, C out increases for you. Yeah. That is yeah. what is being talked about over here. That you device ko badaya, R on kam karne ke liye, but CD bada diya. R on jitna kam hua hua pata nahi. But CD bada gaya, to output load increased. So self loading happened. It 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 kind of cancelled the benefit of improved R on. Yes, sir. Yes. And so my other question was that so how are you are modeling this uh, like R on thing with the like what value like how will we model this uh, transistor with the R on? I get it that uh -huh. is a channel resistance, but like I gave what... you the complete formula. You use the formula to find out your R on. So which this other formula? This one R equivalent. Okay. 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 Hana? So I need the so, equation as much here. Now, there are equations which with which you can do all of that. Don't worry. So if you just add something more, you will actually be able to identify full delay through some equations. Okay, so so we have to get use these formulas to get the R on equivalent of n mass. Yeah. See, kitna kuch karna padega aapko. Don't worry. I don't give if I if I give you such questions which involve these formulas, then I I will also give the formula with this. Okay. Don't worry. I don't want you to remember all this crap. These are long channel models, not even valid today. Okay. These are, you know, simpler estimations, just to give you an idea. Okay. The, I, the intent being that when you look at this formula, you should know that, okay, if I improve, if I increase the VDD, the delay would reduce. If I reduce this, then the delay would increase and so on. That kind of estimate you should be able to make out of such formula. Okay. So, this is what you're talking about and you're talking about self-loading. As you increase the device size, see initially the delays improve so quickly. But after some time, because of self-loading, the slope degrades. Finally, the slope is so bad that you are increasing the size of the device. See, 8, 10, 12, you're increasing the size of the device, but the delay is not really changing much. You've increased the size of the device by how much? 50%. How much has the delay changed? Not even five uh, percent. Hmm? Yes. 
So we're talking about all these optimizations we are doing that uh, about uh, reducing delays and um, so are we trying to in decrease the rise and fall time or the uh, rising and falling propagation delay? Uh, we are more interested in propagation delay. See, rise time and fall time we talked about are important to reduce power. Okay. Right. Yeah, no. So if you will do this, then power would also reduce. But uh, uh, see, increasing the size also means increase in capacitances. So uh, power bade gibi. So when we're talking about delays, you're only talking about delays, Abhi. So, so I mean, um, what what are the ways of reducing rise and fall times? Because intuitively, the same methods should be applied yes. for that. Right? Yes. Intuitively, the same methods have to be applied. And you will notice that uh, uh, if you reduce the load capacitance in some way, right. so self-loading for the rise and fall time would start to appear much faster, much earlier. Yes, yes. Because that's faster it. discharging. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Okay. Okay. Sir, yes, Raghav. Sir, can you come back to this uh, discussion when we're discussing the effect of VDD on the delays? So, sir, I can see from the equation that the resistance was also proportional to the VDD. Mm -hmm. But you said that if I increase the VDD, my delays would increase, sorry, decrease. The resistance was proportional to, uh, inversely proportional to ID also. You notice that? Okay. And this has VD, VDD in it again. Yeah, so... There is okay, this VDD so, that is getting subtracted also. So VDD increases, this thing would also reduce. Both okay. complex. So, so you, like, have to do, you have to do numerical analysis to arrive at the answer. Huh? Okay, so, so like presently I'm saying that if I increase the VDD, my delays would reduce, right? Yes. Okay. Similarly for... For beta ratio, as you change the beta ratio, the delays will, there will be a sweet spot where the low to high and high to low delays would both be lower. And you will, you will have a, a beta ratio range, which you would want to keep in your design. Okay. So beta ratio, you will see will typically in, in CMOS 65 also, you would want to keep it between 1.5 to 2.75, 2.6, something like that. Okay. Uh, we already discussed this that we are looking at first order RC response, which is a decaying exponential. We're talking about delay as uh, effective resistance into capacitance. And uh, uh, we, we, we're really looking at, you know, essentially average current and all those things. But this is too inaccurate to predict current at any given time, but good enough to predict the RC delay. Hmm? Uh, if we try to look at the model of the delay, you know, are on. We can say that a device which is k times a unit device size would have r by k the effective r on and kc as the effective load capacitance. Is this thing clear to you? So this kc is the diffusion one right kc times the C KC would be, yeah the the load capacitance because of drain and source region okay, okay. so c would be when the we have unit yes okay. okay now what happens with the pmos we say that the pmos the resistance is already 2r because of mobility constraints hmm? so for the pmos the capacitance capacitances will move in the same ratio in fact, the resistance will also move in the same ratio, but final resistance will be not R by K, but 2 R by K. Because even in a unit unit thing, the capacity, the resistance was 2 R. Hmm? So sure, what essentially we are saying is capacitance is proportional to width, resistance is inversely proportional to width. Uh, why is unit T was, uh, why does unit T was have a resistance to work? I'm sorry. Uh, what's the reason for unit PMOS having resistance to work? Uh, because the mobility of the PMOS is, uh, the holes is lesser than the mobility of the electrons. Yeah, yeah okay. So, see, what we discussed we will fall back upon all of that only. No new concept now. Okay, sir. Hmm? 
and all the capacitances we are modeling that's the combination of your diffusion capacitances uh, yeah. gate to yeah. source gate to drain yeah. because they are physical in nature usme electrical kuch khas aa nahi raha hai so therefore they for the nmos and pmos they behave the same way the resistance is because the mobility of the nmos is yeah. uh, or the mobility of the electrons is better than the mobility of the holes therefore resistance of the 